have come close to the end of our Jesus Reveal podcast, and I'd like to greet everyone in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm your host, Zintlem Mube, and thank you so much for walking this journey with us. We are in Holy Week, and in the Holy Week, it is a quite a, a significant moment in, in the life of, of us as believers, where we really chronicle and look at Jesus's death or leading up to Jesus's death, his burial, his resurrection as well. And today we are going to be looking at his anointing in, 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 in Bethany. And, and for that, I'm joined none other than Mamnila. Mamnila, thank you so much for being here. It's really, really an honor. Thank you for having me here. It's such a pleasure Great. to be with you. Yeah. And Today, Mamnila, so we'll be looking at various passages of, of, of Scripture. So Matthew 26, there's, there's Mark 14, there's, there's Luke chapter 7, and I know there's also uh, portions of John as well that speak of, of Jesus' anointing. And Mamnila, I think maybe where we can start is just the context and the background in this event or this anointing happening in Bethany and at whose house is happening in as well. And just, if you don't mind, please just paint that picture for us, please. Yeah, sure. Let me just go to the background, how it all started. Yeah. Uh, we are talking about Jesus, the anointed one, being yeah. anointed. Because in um, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. He went about doing good. That was the purpose for his, that anointing, yeah, to go yeah, about yeah. doing good, healing all manner of diseases, and setting the captives free. And there are different types of anointing in the Bible. And we'll zero in on the anointing in Bethany. And Bethany was very special to Jesus because there were a lot of sick folks there, and the, all the anointings took place there. And um, the anointing is recorded in the four Gospels, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So I want to talk about the significance or the purpose of the anointing and who did the anointing. So the anointing in John and in, uh, in Matthew and in Mark, it happens in the house of Simon the leper. The leper. And yeah, in those yeah, days, yeah. Simon, the name Simon was very uh, familiar. Yeah. And even Mary's, they were this, uh, Simon the Cyrene that uh, helped Jesus, Jesus with the cross. Yeah. And what about uh, Simon the leper, Simon the Pharisee, and uh, Simon Peter, yeah. and yeah. even yeah. the Mary's also. But we won't go there. So the first, uh, the one in Matthew, it happens at uh, Simon the leper. Mm -hmm. And I believe that uh, Simon the leper, he was leprous and he was healed by Jesus yeah. before he was an outcast. He was out of the city. But now that he is in the city, he's reinstated with his family and the mm -hmm. community. I think he just wanted to, this is my perspective of that. Yeah. I think he just wanted to have a Thanksgiving meal yeah. and he invited yeah. Jesus and his disciples for the dinner to say how grateful he is for his, his, um, his healing. And in so many of our lives also, we need to go back and say thank you to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what he did. But we'll get to the story how uh, the meal gets interrupted by somebody just coming in and changing the scene there yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. the sinful woman that comes there. And the other anointing I was going to talk about was also the anointing that took place six days before Jesus' Passover. Okay. And this took place in the book of John in the house of Lazarus there too. Yeah, I think yeah. Lazarus, when he was laced, raised from the dead, and uh, his sisters must have decided with the brother and say, hey, let's have a, a meal with, the, with Jesus yeah, just to yeah. say thank you. And there also the revelation that Mary gets about the anointing. So let me just speak a little bit about, about the significance or the purpose. Because yes, even in the yeah. Gospels you will read, the disciples are arguing amongst themselves. They say, for what purpose was this? That's the word they use. For what purpose was yes, this? Yes, so we're yes. going to talk about the purpose just now. So anointing is a powerful concept in Christianity, deeply rooted in biblical history and rich with spiritual significance. Mm -hmm. It's more than a physical act. The disciples must have thought, oh, this lady is putting on an act. Yeah, but this yeah, is yeah. more than a physical act. It represents a special blessing, empowerment, or designation by God. 
And in the Bible, anointing was used as a way to consecrate or set apart someone for a specific purpose. Kings and priests and prophets were uh, anointed in the Bible. Yes, yes, yes. And anointed to symbolize God's choice and God's blessing upon them. Yeah. And so why is the anointing so important that it is repeated in the four Gospels? Now, I'm particularly interested in the two uh, accounts, the one in, um, in Matthew, Matthew yeah. and uh, the one in Luke and in John. Okay. Because uh, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, Matthew and Mark don't say it so much in detail like Luke does. Yes, like yes, he yes. describes this woman's character. He describes uh, her sin. He is like portraying everything about it and he's putting it on the table. And yet God came for the sinners. Yeah. And yeah. the disciples must have thought, now, what is this kind of a woman coming and doing here? And even uh, a Simon the, in the Pharisee's house, he said, if this man is a prophet, this Jesus, if he's a prophet, he will know what type of a woman. Yes, they yes, were not yes. actually uh, interfering with the woman there. They were actually trying to condemn Jesus to say, oh, these are the teachings that we have heard in the law, but now here you allow a sinful mm -hmm. woman to touch you. But Jesus, with compassion in his heart, he is not worried about what people have yeah, done, what yeah, they do. Yeah. He is worried about getting them out of their situation and giving them hope for tomorrow. Yes, and I think yes. that's where we come in, where we see people, we don't judge them for what they do and, and say all manner of things against them. When we are moved with compassion, we'll go past their sins and their failures and their faults and we will try to help them and give them hope to come back into society. And I believe that's what happened in, 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 this, in the story that we are talking about. Yeah. And so... Yeah, he tells about a Pharisee named Simon who invites Jesus and his disciples for a dinner. I suppose, like I said, this was uh, Simon the leper as uh, the Gospels record, right? He must have invited Jesus maybe to say, thank you for healing me and my leprosy. And once I was an outcast, but now you have restored me back to my family and yeah, community. Yeah, yeah. And you have reinstated me into my position of authority. And therefore, I want to have a Thanksgiving meal. Now suddenly the scene changes. It's no more about the meal. It's about this nameless, sinful woman, uninvited guest that interrupts this meal. And she comes into the house and she does the unthinkable. She starts anointing Jesus' feet with her tears, falling on Jesus' feet. She starts wiping with her hair. And it, uh, in those days, a lady was not allowed to let her hair down. Her down. It was yes, against yes. the culture. And she could only open her hair when she's inside their house or with her husband or with a family, yeah, but yeah. not in public. But yes, yeah, she does the unthinkable and she breaks protocol. She breaks everything and yeah, she goes yeah. and she starts kissing his feet nonstop. She... She kept on kissing his feet. She poured all of her costly perfume on Jesus. She gave all that she had to get. So she brought something to give to Jesus to get back something from, from Jesus, what she didn't have. She didn't have forgiveness. She yeah, didn't have yeah, uh, yeah. The, uh, the ability to be amongst people. But here she comes and she breaks protocol and she breaks the culture of the day. And she is there realizing she is also an outcast and she was a wicked, sinful woman. She needed a savior to forgive her and to restore her and yeah. to replace her back into the community so that she can back to her identity and her dignity as well. And I believe she must have thought, if Simon the leper was outside of the city gates and now he's got his healing, he's back reinstated, she must be thought to herself, I'm going to take this risk of going in there and maybe... Jesus can restore me as yeah. well, forgive me also and heal me the inward pain yeah. that I have. And that's, that's so interesting, Mam Nila, because, you know, when we look at all the cases of how Jesus healed, it usually starts with the person asking yes. that they be healed. But with the case of this sinful woman, all that she does is just go, goes to Jesus' feet, 
begins the anointing. Well, in, in the account of, of, of Matthew, the anointing starts from his head yes. and then he works, work, she works her way down. And, but then to what you are saying, she receives something that maybe she didn't verbalize in, yes. in asking, yes. but she really needed that. Yeah. And that's, that's very uh, important. Even when we, we look at how we come to Jesus as well and our devotion towards him in, yes. in whether it's tears, whether it's, it's just being at his feet. And, and there's really something powerful there that we can learn from this yeah, woman. Yeah, it is that. so powerful yeah. because uh, it doesn't record that she said anything. No, yeah. yeah it was yeah. only her action, what yes. she was doing. And um, she didn't voice her opinion or she didn't come asking for anything. Yeah. Yeah. But she just did. Absolutely. But the people that were quite vocal about what was happening was, was Jesus' disciples. Uh, firstly, I guess they know who the woman was and they know her yes, steps first. Yes, definitely. So they have something to say on that. And secondly, looking at her use of the alabaster oil and the alabaster box, yeah. looking at how expensive that is and as how it's been recorded, um, they are complaining that... No, but you can use this for something else. You can, yes. you know, help the poor. And, and, and Jesus obviously responds to that. Yes. So let's, let's please, Mamnila, if we can just look at that as well and, and just reflect on that back and forth between the disciples okay. and, and, and Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what this woman did was not just an act. She yeah. took the risk of being ridiculed and yeah. thrown out of yeah. Jesus' presence. Yeah. So this woman shows us the best use of time yeah. And the best use of her treasure. Sure. She was at the right place at the right time mm. to receive her breakthrough. Okay. And um, her act of service, her act of love, and her act of sacrifice was commended by Jesus. Mm -hmm. When the disciples were indignant and angry with her, and they were even rebuking her, yes. Jesus rebukes his disciples, and he commends love, and especially when it was so costly. Because when you think of, when I was doing a research on the alabaster box, I was thinking that the disciples and everybody in the room knew the cost of the alabaster box. Yeah. Because I believe in those days, uh, every girl in a household was given a alabaster box with the perfume. It was the most expensive perfume. Yeah. The father yeah. would give it to her as a dowry. Oh, so when she wow. goes to the house of her husband, she can use it there. But here yeah. you can see these ladies kept it for a specific yes. purpose. And so we can learn a few lessons from this woman. Yeah. She didn't come with she didn't come empty-handed mm -hmm. to the master. One. She had a revelation. He was her king, mm -hmm. a prophet, and a priest. Because that's the anointing she knew about in, yeah. in those days that they, these people were anointed. But she had all this three in one, in one person. Mm. She said, he, he's going to be my king, he's my prophet, and he's my priest. So she came to anoint him for his burial. Yeah. That was the purpose. Yeah. Yeah. And the third thing, she took the risk and did the impossible that nobody will want to do. So when Simon was thinking... Uh, like I said, if he only knew, the, if he's a prophet, if he only knew what this woman was doing, he wouldn't mm -hmm. allow her to touch. Mm -hmm. So in this account, criticism is directed at Jesus. Yes. Yeah. For allowing yeah. the woman to touch him. Oof. So Jesus, immediately knowing Simon's thought, asked him, can I tell you a story about forgiveness? You know, Jesus was the best storyteller. Mm -hmm. if, he, if he knew what the people were thinking of, he will tell them a parable and he'll include, include you in that yeah, parable. Yeah, so yeah, that's how yeah, he included yeah. Simon in this parable and said, you know what, there were people owing money. There were two lots of men that were owing. One was owing 500 denarii and the other 50. Hmm. And he forgave both of them. So who would love him more, he yes, said, or the one yes. who was forgiven more. Then he turns to the woman. All the time, the woman is behind him. And he's not uh, face to face with it. But now, because everything is turned around, he turns around to this woman. He said, but this woman, ever since she entered the room, she's been wiping, you know, in the culture of the day should be when a, a guest comes in, the host must take a basin of water, wash, wash his feet, feet and yes, put yes. the towel around and cleanse him and anoint his head with the cheapest oil. Oh. That was the... Uh, 
things that they did in those days. Yeah. He said, but you, he's rebuking Simon now. He says, but you, I entered in, you didn't do all that for me. Mm. But this woman, ever since I entered, sure. with the tears she's wiping, oh, sure. she's cleansing my feet. And she opens her hair. She's not worried about dirtying her hair because I have all this dust on my feet. Yeah. She's not worried about that. Yeah. And then she takes the alabaster jar. She breaks the neck and then the perfume, hmm. that perfume is for peace. You can see this woman has no peace, but she come here for peace. Yeah. And doesn't the Bible say when you enter any home, when it is a household of faith, you leave the peace of God. Yes, yes, and that's yes, what yes. she wanted everybody to understand. There is peace in this house. And so this story is not only for the disciples, but he said her story Whenever ever the gospel is being preached and to the entire world, her name must be mentioned wow. in memory of her. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. imagine a simple woman doing a simple thing and she is known throughout the world yeah. for a simple act. Sure, that's so powerful, mum. And I'm just looking then at just this passage and all of these interactions, the... I, I guess the, the redemption that she finds at, mm -hmm. at Jesus' feet, um, Jesus teaching everyone else around what she's actually doing. First, I guess there's, there's two uh, anointings that you did mention. Mm -hmm. the, almost the acknowledgement and separating of Jesus as the king and the high priest yes. and, the, and the prophet, but also his burial as well. Yes. And then there's even... Her then, like I said, receiving that forgiveness, receiving the, the forgiveness and even the wholeness. And mom, how then can we then look at this passage and, and what can we take away from it in just in its, in its totality? The takeaway I can say in this passage, when I, if I read something very profound in verse 48, yeah. when he turns to the woman and he says, your sins are forgiven. Now his focus is on this woman and her forgiveness. Yes, and that's yes. what's a takeaway. When Jesus looks at us, he looks at our heart, not what we have done or what we are yeah. still going to do. He looks at that. And so Jesus said to this woman, and this is also very powerful, he says, your faith has saved you. Hmm. You go into peace, in freedom, from all the distresses that you experience because of the result of sin. And he doesn't point out a sin. Yeah. Because the, the disciples were saying, if he only knew how sinful, how notorious she is, uh, she's cast out from the society, if he only knows. But he doesn't name her sin. Yeah. But he just said, you are forgiven. Hmm. And this is what Jesus does to us. We don't have to name all our sins. If he says, you are forgiven, you are forgiven. Wow. That's it. Yeah. 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 So she teaches us a valuable lesson. We all need to come to the point in our lives where we realize we are nothing without Christ. Amen. She Amen. acted out of sincere faith and love, hmm. forgetting herself, breaking the alabaster box, yeah. Yeah. which is symbolically showing that if very soon the master will be broken like the alabaster jar for us, wow. Wow. pouring out all of his love, shedding his precious blood for the forgiveness of our sins and securing a place for us in heaven. Sure. That is so powerful, Mom. And I think... Going into then, because in our, in our next episode, we'll be looking at then the, the crucifixion and, and ultimately the death of Jesus Christ. And it's really so significant and important how from the beginning of, I guess, the Holy Week, from Sunday, from his triumphal entry, yes. right through to, to just everything leading up to where we are now, is really was just a preparation of Jesus' body. Yes. And ultimately then his, his exaltation yes. as, 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 as king and how everyone seems to be coming into place without realizing yeah. that what they are doing is really going to be part of history. Yeah. I, I, I'd like to think this woman did not know that indeed what she was doing there yes. was going to be testified across the world. Exactly. And even 2,000 years later, later, we are talking, <laughs> we are about, talking her. about her. Yeah. <laughs> How powerful yeah. is that? That is so powerful. Yes. And, and I think that is truly a lesson for us in, I guess, our obedience and being allowed to be used by God. And that use, we may think it's insignificant, mm -hmm. but we never know that in a hundred years time, 
yes. it will be testified about. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, Mom, thank you so much. This was this was really really good, and I think this is a good time for us to pause and and just thank everyone as well for for just listening and and even watching us on on YouTube, on Apple, on Spotify, and we just pray that this is as we're going into. I guess the end of the Jesus Revealed podcast series becomes a revelation to you as Jesus is revealed in your life. God bless you. Okay. Can I just say this one yeah. thing? Yeah. May this holy week leading up to the cross be a reminder of what Jesus did for us. Amen. Okay. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.